Welcome back! In this video, we are going to refactor our picking up logic from our player script into separate components to make our system more modular and more object oriented. So what we can do is create a new folder in our scripts and let's call it pickable. And in this folder, I'm going to right click create a new C sharp script. And again, we are going to start with an abstraction. So I'm going to call it I pickable. And this will be our interface. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. Okay. Now again, we are going to delete the update and start method. This will not be a class. This will be an interface. And we are going to delete the mono behavior inheritance. And this is our abstraction of an object that is pickable. I'm going to paste here the code that we are going to need. We will have this bull flag keep world position. We are using it to decide if we want to keep the world position. This will be useful for the chest object to keep it in the same position while we are carrying it. And we are going to have a game object returning method pickup. And this will return our object that we can parent to our player, to our player's hand. Okay, so we have this. Let's go back to our player script. And in our player script, as you might recall, we have used this transform pickup parent to place items and to assign them to our object in hand item. And we did all that in this interact method. Now, for the most part, it is used to pick up items. So we can right click on it, rename, and we can call it pickup. And this will be our method. Right now we have this if code uh, and those double ifs actually, and it care takes care of all the objects that are pickable. This food object, the weapon object has the common logic and the item, the default item has its own logic. And we are setting this parameter in the set parent method world position uh, stays. And for the item, so for the chest, it is true. Well, for our objects, it can be false, it can be true. It doesn't really matter because we are resetting those positions and rotations of, the, of this item. Okay, now what we can do here is instead of having all of this code, we can select this, Control K, Control C to comment this out. And instead, what we can do is we can create this very simple logic. We are going to get ipickable reference, pickable item equals hit.collider get component ipickable. So again, we are using abstraction to limit the, the lines of code that we need to have in our player and to make this more maintainable since we can create more pickable objects later. So now, if this is not null, we are going to uh, call pickup source. So this will be the audio source play. So let me create it at the top. We are going to have a serialized field private audio source pickup source. This will be the sound that we want to play to give the player feedback that they have picked up an object. And we are going to assign in hand item equals pickable item. And this is our abstract method that we are going to basically implement into our objects. And then we are going to call in hand item transform set parent. And we are going to make this code more universal by passing in the pickup parent dot transform as the uh, parent for our in hand item and passing pickable item keep world position. This is a property of type of bool. And this will give us this parameter from the I pickable object. Great. So now you can see, as you can see, we have limited the number of lines of code that we need to have here. So now we need to create those ipickable objects that will implement this interface. So let's save all the scripts so far and we should have save all. And now let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. Now, so far our item has item script on it, our health uh, item. So the burger has the food, I uh, food script on it and the weapon has the weapon script on it. And we could add or implement the interface on those scripts and uh, basically created the same logic that we had in our player but since unity is component based so for example the rigid body component is responsible for making this object react to physics or interact with the physics engine from unity we want to keep our code component based so that we can reuse it easily so instead of extending this food script with our implementation of ipickable i want to create two separate components one will be for our health and weapon items and this will be simply to pick up item into the hand of the player and one will be to handle the default items that we want to just carry around so inside our pickable folder inside our scripts let's create a new c script i'm going to call it pickable 
item and I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to call it pickable object okay now we will be able to drag them on top of our pickable item will be our weapon and pickable item will be our health item and pickable object will be our item so our chest and we are going to be able to reuse those components now let's open pickable item first okay i'm going to delete the update and start methods and beside mono behavior inheritance we are going to implement i pickable interface we could right click on it quick action and implement interface to create the default implementation i'm going to paste the code instead that we need to have we are going to have a public bool keep world position uh, property from our ipickable and we are going to give it getter and private setter and to expose it in unity we are going to add field serialized field now as i have mentioned for a pickable item so for the weapon and the health item so the burger we are not going to care much about this because we are going to reset the position and the rotation now we have also had the rigid body and we have set it to be dynamic, uh, to be interacting with physics engine. And when we pick it up, we want to set it to be kinematic. So in the awake, we are going to get it, rb equals get component rigid body. And inside our implementation of pickup method, we are going to check if rb is not null, we are going to set its kinematic equals true. And then we are going to set transform.position here to be zero, vector three zero, and rotation to be quaternion.identity. And we are going to simply return this game object so the player can assign it as the parent on the hand transform. Great, so let's save this, let's open the second script. Okay. And again, let's delete the update and start. Let's beside the behavior implement I pickable. And I'm going to again paste the code. So again, we are going to basically have the same codes. That's why I wanted to create those components so that we do not have to repeat the same code for each script for our different items. So here we have the same keep world position, but by default, we are going to set it to true so that we always preserve the world position of an object in our case this will be chest or whatever we want to just carry around with us and we are going to set the rigid body again in the awake to get component rigid body and again we are going to check if it is not null we are going to set it to kinematic and we are going to simply return the same game object without doing anything more here so this is where we can implement our custom logic for how we want to pick up an object now, I do admit that there might be not that many ways that we want to use, but basically now all we had to do, let's save this, let's go back to Unity. Great. All we had to do was to drag those components, so pickable item or pickable object on our game objects that are items in our game. So for the burger, we have pickable item. For the weapon, we have a pickable item. And for the uh, item, so for the chest, we have pickable objects. So that's not a bit of a conflict between the name of the game object and the name of the component. But now keep world position for the chest is true, which means that we should have the same behavior that we had when we have the, the whole code crammed into the player script. Before we can try playing our game, we need to go to our player capsule and we had added this audio source to give feedback to our player. Let's add an audio source here. Okay, we're going to uncheck play on awake. And we are going to drag it as a pickable source for our player script. Let me minimize this. I have provided for you a sound switch 01. Let me play it. This is not a perfect sound for this, but this will do for now. And we can maybe limit the volume to something like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Okay, let's see if it works now. Let's press play. Okay, and let's try picking up this chest. And we have heard the sound and now this works as expected. A burger. Again, this works exactly the same as we had previously. And again, we still have our feedback for the shooting mechanic and we can drop it all and we can pick up the chest again. And when we have picked up the gun, we can't really pick up the chest. Uh, we need to drop the gun to do this. So everything works as expected, but now our code is a bit more maintainable. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial series. I will add one more video to this about how to hold a button to pick up an object. And when we let go of the button too soon, we are not going to pick up the object. But that will be an extra video later on. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And you can also support me through Patreon. Uh, thanks a lot to all the Patreons that are currently supporting me. Thanks to you guys. I can create those tutorials about Unity on YouTube. 
see you in another tutorial.